is Brittany from Hand to Mind. This is our first grade teach at home math video series. This is week two, day four. So we've been talking about a lot of strategies, but one strategy that I love is the doubling strategy. And so, you know, the other day I was looking at a pack of sodas that I bought. And so here are the pack of sodas I bought. And I noticed that there were six sodas in this pack. And then I noticed that there were two rows. And I was thinking, that looks like something I recognize. There's that double. There's that double that I know that three and three is six. And then I thought, I wonder what would happen if I only wanted one row of this pack. So I only wanted one row. How many sodas would I have? So I had six and I get rid of a row. How many sodas will I have? And I was wondering, could I use my doubles to help me? So today we're going to look at, can we use doubles to help us when we subtract? Come join me today to learn more about using doubles to subtract. Today we're going to begin by looking at a picture to help us with this idea of using our doubles. So if I was to say, looking at this picture, if there are 10 fingers on two hands, how many fingers would there be on one hand? Can you tell the person next to you how many fingers there'll be if, if there's 10 fingers on two hands, how many there'll be on one hand? And how do you know that? Tell the person next to you. If you don't have anybody, you can tell the screen. Did you say five? So we knew that Two hands have 10 fingers. So how would you know that one hand had five fingers? Well, if I just look, if I don't look at this hand and I only look at this hand, that one hand, I see five fingers. Did you know what you did is a type of subtraction? So a way to look at this is you knew you had 10 fingers with two hands, but then you just took that, took no, that many fingers, which is five, and that gives you five fingers. Hmm. And something else I noticed is that 10 is made up of a double, which is five and five. That's really interesting. Let's see how that works next. So now we have a picture of an insect. And how do I know it's an insect? Because I know that insects have six legs. So when I look at the insect's legs, I can look at these, those are their antennas, so I'm not looking at those, but I can see that this insect has six legs. So same question, if I have an insect that has six legs, how many legs are just on one side of that insect? What's the answer? Can you tell the person next to you, what, how many legs are just on one side of the, in, of the insect? Did you say three? So when I look at this side, that is three. And when I look at this side, that is three. Yeah. And I noticed that three and three, that's a double that I know, three plus three. I know three plus three is six, and that's how I know an insect has six legs. So if this insect has six legs total, and I just want one side of it, so I don't want this side, I just want this side, then what I'm doing is when I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of that side, so I'm getting rid of that three, and it's gonna be left with three. There's that double again, and I know three and three make six. So I wonder how we can use this idea with subtraction. We're starting to see this idea. So let's use some 10 frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually flash this 10 frame up so you already see it, okay? And so I'm gonna just gonna let you see this for just a few more seconds. One, two, three. And the question I wanna ask you is, how many and how do you see it? So how many did you see? Did you see 10? Did you see 10? And how did you see 10? I wonder if some of you are like, well, it's 10 because I know that a full 10 frame is 10. 
Yeah, is a way to see 10. Does anybody have a different way that you know it's 10? Did anyone go, well, I love doubles and I can see a double in this. I can see that the top had five and the bottom have five. That means it doubled. So five and five is the same thing as 10. All right, that's really kind of cool. So you can see that double five and five. So what if I asked you a different question? So we can start with how many? Oh, that's exactly what we had a while ago, right? There's that 10. But this question is, what if I wanted to know how many were on the top row only? If I only wanted to know how many were on the top row. Hmm. Well, that's really nice that I can just look right here that there's five, but 10 is composed of five and five. We already know that. So if I want to connect this to subtraction, what we're doing when we're only looking for that one row, when we're only looking for that one row, then what I'm doing is thinking about that double. What is 10 composed of? It's composed of five and five. So I just need to remove a row of five and that's gonna leave me with five. That's really a nice way of looking at that. Okay, so let's look at another one. How many? So how many? Did you say 16? And the question is, how do you know that 16? How do you know it's 16? How many of you out there are like, well, I see a double that I know. I know eight and eight is 16. So you already know that that's eight and eight because you have this nice double. It's whatever's on this top is on the bottom. That's what doubling means. It's the same amount in each one of the groups, right? So here's the next problem. Here we go. Oh, how many? Did you notice it was 16 again? So this time, I just wanna do the problem. What is 16 minus eight? 16 minus eight. Can you figure out what 16 minus eight is by looking at that picture? Can you tell the person next to you how you got your answer? Tell them what your answer is and then tell them how you got it. And if you don't have anybody next to you, just tell the screen. So how many of you said 16 minus eight is eight? And then did you know that it was eight because you knew that 16 was composed of eight and eight? And when we do 16 minus eight, we're just removing a row of eight. We're just removing that row of eight and we're left with eight. So it's this double. So if I, I can use my doubles to help me with subtraction if I know those, okay? So let's try the next one. How many? How many? Did you say 18? And so my question is, the question we're gonna solve today is going to be 18 minus nine. Can you use that picture to help you figure out what is 18 minus nine? Hmm, and I wonder why I would have chosen that problem. Why would I have chosen 18 minus nine? Can you tell the person next to you? Can you tell the person next to you either what is 18 minus nine? Also, how do you know? How do you know your answer? And if you've already answered that, can you say, why would I have chosen that problem? Hmm. So I wonder, how many of you said that 18 minus nine is nine? So I wonder why I would have given you that problem. We knew this was 18. Why did we know this was 18? Because I saw another double. So if I have 18 and I subtract nine, that's like removing a row of the nine, right? And I'm left with nine. 
So that's really nice. When I know that the total is a number that has a, that I can think of a double for, then I, when I subtract that and know that that's nine, oh, those are just thinking about my, my doubles. Nine plus nine is the same thing as 18. Or 18 minus nine equals nine. So I'm just removing that extra row, that double. So what I want you to do is I want us just to summarize what we've just talked about with subtraction. We talked about this idea of how we can use our, know, our understanding of doubles to help us subtract. If we know doubles like five and five is 10 and four and four is eight and three and three is six, those can help us when we subtract if we know that. So here is a picture that we're gonna just make a summarize what we've learned. So we have a picture of a spider. Does anybody know what double they see on that spider? What double do you see on that spider? Do you see four and four and know that that is eight? So what if I was to ask you that I just wanted to know how many legs were on one side of the spider? Then what I'm asking you is, you know there's eight legs and I just need one side. So I'm just gonna get rid of one side, which is four, well, because four and four makes eight, then the other side should also have four because it's a double. Nice, so eight minus four is four. Okay, what about this picture? So that's a real life picture of a double. And now we have a 10 frame, a double 10 frame with a double. So what double do I have here? Do you see seven on top and seven on bottom? Yeah, and we know that that is 14. But if I want to connect this to subtraction and using my doubles, then that my question might be then, what is 14 minus seven? So what do I need to do to find 14 minus seven? I know this is 14, right? So what do I need to do to minus seven? Well, I just need to take another row. And because 14 is composed of seven and seven, then I know the other row has to have seven. So this is what we call using our doubles to subtract. We have to think about what doubles are there that can help us with this idea of subtraction. If you wanna continue practicing this idea of using doubles while you subtract, please visit handtomind.com where you can find more activities that you can download and continue practicing them. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Thank you.